Yo, what is up, guys? Today, I'm going to be showing you guys how to create dope looking YouTube thumbnails. This is the way that I've been creating thumbnails for the past year and a half. I edit all of my YouTube thumbnails inside of Photoshop. But without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into the video. So once you go ahead and open Photoshop, you guys are going to be met with this sort of screen. You're going to want to go ahead and do new file. 1280 by 720 so just type in 1280 720 resolution i just do 500 and honestly don't know why just it just is what it is rgb color 16 bit background contents white I honestly just leave that super basic and then you guys could just save this as a preset so youtube thumbnail right here then once you go ahead and finish typing that in you just go ahead and hit create it'll automatically create that preset for you so that way in the future you can go ahead and open that size of document you can either use photos that you take of yourself or you can use screen grabs from a video that you have recorded so for me i have this screen grab that i got from a 4k video recording and i literally just posed for a thumbnail and this is sort of the blank image this is sort of what we're going to be starting with what i like to do is i like to separate the subject from the background but I like to place sort of the thumbnail where I want it to begin with. You sort of have like three different options where like you can place um, the subject. Obviously you can place it wherever, but there's the left third, there's the center, or there's the right third. And if you're using the right third, you kind of want to be pointing or like leading the viewer's eyes towards the center or that side. And vice versa, if you're on this side, you want to be pointing the viewer towards that side or the center, if that makes sense. And then if you're centered, of course just sort of like maybe your face something like that shoulders and like just icons or text something like that it's a super super simple way to look at creating thumbnails just so that way you kind of have a starting point point. and for me since i'm pointing towards the right of the screen it's going to make sense to kind of just blow me up in the left third and have sort of all my graphics on this side in sort of this native space so let's go ahead and do that it's positioned where we want our thing to be so just select the layer and then i use command t I believe it's alt t or control t for uh, windows sweet so now that we have the subject placed exactly where we want it now we're going to go ahead and control j or command j it'll duplicate that layer for you um i'm just going to go ahead and name this the foreground foreground and obviously this is going to be the background so let's just rename this and when i actually edit this stuff myself i don't rename it at all so now that we have our layers named let's go ahead and select subject for the foreground so go over here select the layer select up here go to subject and it should do a pretty decent job at keying me out and it actually did so let's go ahead and hit the masking button now it's going to go ahead and separate the foreground from the background. Let's go ahead, clean up this mask because you can see it kind of looks pretty bad. So let's go ahead, select and mask. Let's go ahead and fix this mask up a little bit. So I'm just going to drag sort of like and draw the outlines to make it look a little bit cleaner, just to where I think the keying did a bad job of like keying. So to remove stuff, you hold option and then that'll kind of delete it. And then if you just go ahead and drag it like normal, then it'll just go ahead and add stuff into the selection. Go ahead and throw that in there a little bit. Remove this area because it just kind of screwed up. And then just kind of refine it. Keep deleting it. See what it does right there. Dope. And then the biggest sort of thing to smooth it out is just go ahead and hit the smooth. And it'll go ahead and start smoothing things out for you. So that way it's just not as rough. And you can shift the edge negatively to kind of come in closer. And that looks pretty good. Let's go ahead and hit OK. Now we have a lot cleaner sort of selection for our foreground. Now the process actually really begins where it become creative. What I do for the background, because I don't want the background to be popping out, I kind of want our subject to be popping out. Let's go ahead and create a hue saturation, completely desaturate the background. So it's just black and white, and then add a, um, a kind of mask it to it or clipping mask. The way you do that is you hold Option or Alt on Windows. You just go in between this line right here. You'll see this icon pop up. You click it and then it'll kind of do that little arrow. That's telling you that it is clipped to this background layer. Let's go ahead and also do brightness and contrast. I want to turn the brightness down a little bit just so that way we can kind of just separate the subject. You can already see there's some separation going on. Now let's go ahead and edit the foreground. With the foreground, I really like to do brightness and contrast. Let's just go ahead and throw these up there and then curves for the actual layer, then just clip mask both of those. I'm gonna go ahead and turn the brightness up a tad, just like that, that, that looks pretty good. Um, and then go to curves. Right here, you kinda wanna throw in S curve. So just right on this sort of intersection right here, bring it down a little bit. And then most people do like up on this dot, which it actually does look pretty good, but I found that like I've been liking this look down here, sort of in the center. Kinda just adds a little bit more contrast and it kinda makes it look a little bit more like glossy. 
which for thumbnails that's kind of the look that i kind of go for just a like super clean look and yeah that looks pretty dope that looks pretty good right now um let's go ahead and move on to the next step and the next step is going to be adding some curves to the background as well so kind of just bringing the, the blacks down a little bit making it like actual black in the background and so i'm just going to affect the shadows just drag this endpoint over and you'll see that shadows start to get really really dark on the background layer only that's exactly what we want kind of just want to match sort of the blacks to here we're going to go ahead and try to make the subject look a little bit more you know try to make it pop a little bit more and the way we're going to do that is we're going to go ahead and use this dodge tool and what this dodge tool does is you can see if i swipe my face with it it brines it up and these are sort of the settings that I use. I don't know if it's a default. I'm sure it probably is. Exposure 22% and then like protect tones, whatever, uh, range midtones. And then I just go ahead and I use the light that's already on my face to sort of like create more shape and dimension to my face. So I see that there's light hitting right here and I see that there's sort of light hitting all along right here. And really what we're focused on is the actual highlights. So I'm just gonna go drag right through here, kind of bring sort of like this um, highlight up and then same thing right here. Just drag it up and then i'm going to go ahead and go with a big size and just do a general sweep of the actual face just to go ahead and brighten up my entire face now another trick for you guys to use is use this dodge tool on the eyes and that's what kind of creates like the bright sort of cartoony look that people really like to go for in thumbnails it just really makes you kind of stand out a little bit more and sort of focus on the whites and then really focus on the pupils and then just kind of just keep playing with it and then you'll see like it starts to really pop a lot nicer than what it was before same thing with this eyeball just go ahead just keep going crazy with it so it kind of starts to shine through and you'll notice like a red hue popping out we'll go ahead and fix that later so don't worry about that now let's go ahead and make my skin smoother i don't have the greatest skin in the world so this is kind of a step that i have to use so go to blur a tool and then just bring it up by using the right bracket key and then just kind of smooth out where the skin just isn't looking the greatest and for me that's pretty much my entire face but it is what it is like kind of where there's texture just kind of remove the texture sort of texture right there sort of texture right there just move that out a little bit and then yeah that looks pretty decent there's a couple of blemishes that i gotta fix up so just go ahead and use this bandage tool the remove tool the spot healing brush is what you want to use there we go that's the tool this is looking funky today There we go. You kind of just got to keep playing with it until you get a decent result. And I think that looks pretty dang good. Now, because my shirt's sort of like um, an off-white color, I want it to just be straight up pure white in the thumbnail. And then also I want to fix the eyeball sort of, I want to make this white again. So we're going to go ahead and add an adjustment layer for hue and saturation. And we're going to go ahead and create a clipping mask to my actual layer. And then we're going to go ahead and just drag this saturation all the way down. And then we're going to go ahead select the actual mask so select this go to the paintbrush and then make sure that it is white or black so that way we can just draw over where we want the actual saturation to be so basically you just draw in the face so we'll just go ahead and paint over my face paint over my hat make sure we bring that back paint over my finger make sure we bring that saturation back just try to get it as close as possible um everything looks pretty good let's go ahead and bring it back to black and then desaturate this sort of little spot right here. There we go. Let's use the wrong tool. There we go. And then that's that. So just sort of desaturate that and then you'll kind of get it to back to normal. So that's that. Now the next step is actually creating the graphics, I guess. We're gonna want to add um, graphics below the actual subject so that way it kind of feels like it's like behind me as you can see like that's like behind me so we're gonna go ahead and just do that with graphics in this area i'm a big fan of using references so let's go ahead and just drag in two references and i'll show you kind of what i'm like enjoying about each one so let's go ahead and look at the first one the thing that i really enjoy about this thumbnail is i like the cursor and i also like the fact that he went ahead and used the applications icon and then here's the second one i kind of just like the idea that sort of i had a picture of me pointing and he was pointing i like that and then Honestly, I'm probably just gonna throw a thumbnail 
in this area. So sort of literally just place like that. So let's go ahead and start creating the thumbnail now that we sort of have a reference to use. And if you have issues finding references, all you have to do is type in the title of the video that you're trying to recreate. And then you can sort through like most viewed videos or just whatever kind of sticks out to you. I'm gonna go ahead and go on Google, the Photoshop icon. And this one looks good. This one's clean. So let's go ahead and use it. Right click, copy image, and then you just control V. And then I'm gonna throw this actually right here. It's kind of just where I want to place it. I'm going to go ahead and throw a drop shadow on the foreground sort of subject. And the way you do that is you double click this and just go ahead and tap drop shadow. And I'm going to go ahead and play with the settings. Nope, I kind of like that. It adds a little bit more depth um, to the actual icon itself. It doesn't look so flat. So this is after, that's before. Just looks a bit better like that. Now, I'm just going to go ahead and import a old thumbnail that I have created. That actually looks pretty clean. Like honestly, I could probably just wrap this up right here. But before we do, I'm going to go ahead and import a cursor. So I went ahead and pulled up a Mac cursor, just control C, control V onto the actual layer. And then just make sure it's above the actual layer right here. You can literally just do something like that. Um, let's see if the black looks good. So a good tip to sort of when you're editing thumbnails is you can zoom out and kind of see what it's going to look like on YouTube. Let me go ahead and just control I invert, see if it looks better that way or that way. I'm like, I'm like in the white cursor. So we'll go ahead and do that. There's a weird sort of shadow on this. So let's go ahead and fix that. Just pen tool. We'll go ahead and make selection and we'll just control J again, duplicate it and then just delete. And then we'll go ahead and get the cursor that way. That looks freaking sweet to me. So that is honestly how I go about creating my YouTube thumbnails. Of course, each thumbnail is going to look a little bit different. Using this workflow, using these sort of tips, these tools in these sort of ways will help get you the result that you're actually looking for. So if you guys want to go ahead and learn more about content creation, please feel free to check out more videos on my YouTube channel or go ahead and catch up with me on Instagram. I share a lot more tips and tricks there, but that is going to be it for today's tutorial. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace out.